Today, we're going to talk about the cloud. Yeah, not that kind of cloud. Or that kind of cloud. That one sounds about right. Yo, what's going on, everyone? I get asked all the time about the cloud. You know, the mysterious cloud. Can you talk about the different types of jobs? What does somebody who works with the cloud do? And that's kind of what this video is going to be about. It's going to be a rough overview of what you can expect with the cloud. What is the cloud, right? And I think I've answered this question before, but essentially the cloud is somebody else's computer. You are hosting your applications, your services, maybe even your Active Directory or many of your servers are hosted out in the cloud, which are just essentially stored in somebody else's data center. So you rent or, you know, lease server space to host your different applications or uh, services that you normally would have had in house. However, it can be much more beneficial monetary wise. It can be much easier to service with uh, using cloud services and cloud services such as AWS or Google Cloud Platform or of course Microsoft's Azure. These are all the most popular cloud related services that can help you move your services and applications over to the cloud. And of course there's better definitions out there and I strongly encourage you guys to research if the cloud is something that's interesting to you. Now you may have already known of other cloud services that are out there like Dropbox or Microsoft uh, 365. These are all cloud services and those are things that you can look into a little bit further to understand what the cloud kind of encompasses in many different ways. Now, I know from personal experience, moving over from having your Microsoft network essentially to the cloud. So you're moving your Microsoft Active Directory to Microsoft Azure Active Directory and moving you know, from uh, on-site Office to Office 365. These are di different ways that you know, the cloud services you, right? And it can make things much easier. And of course, the cloud is just huge nowadays. You hear about it all the time. Everybody wants to work in the cloud. They want to be a cloud engineer or a cloud architect or somebody doing something in the cloud, right? It's, it's, just, it's, it's one of those big things right now. And it's going to continue to grow because you, as you see, many things are moving towards the cloud. They're looking to save money. They're looking to make things a little bit easier and the cloud will do that for you. It can make things easier. It can make things a little bit more cost effective. So what is, you know, the purpose behind it? You know, why, why is there such a strong movement towards the cloud? And you know, the, there's many different aspects of this that we can look into or that we could talk about, but that's really not what this video is entirely about. But how do you, you know, work in, in the cloud? How do you get to that point where you're going to be a cloud architect or engineer or cloud associate or gosh knows whatever other title is out there for somebody who works with different clouds? The point of this is there are many things to be known about working with the cloud. And I'm so tired of saying that already. So let's try to stop saying that. However, knowing what you're going to be doing, right? And, and people ask this all the time, what do you do as somebody who works with this technology? And that's honestly one of the hardest questions to answer because every single person who goes to an organization who is expected to service their cloud could be doing something completely different from one another. There's nothing set in stone saying, well, every single cloud architect is going to do this, or every single engineer is going to do this. Well, every single one of these engineers and architects, associates, whatever other titles, need to have a great fundamental knowledge of building, establishing, configuring, maintaining servers. Whether that's going to be Microsoft servers or Linux servers, it's going to be fundamental that that's your key point of knowledge because understanding how to spin up a server within the cloud, whether you're using AWS or Google Cloud Platform or Azure, you're gonna have to understand how a server operates, right? You're gonna have to understand just the, the inner workings there. Now, of course, not every single person in the cloud is going to be entirely immersed in building servers in one of these cloud platforms. You may be servicing, you know, Office 365. You could be, a, you know, an uh, Office 365 administrator. You're essentially working in the cloud every single day, working in Office 365, right? I mean, you could kind of tie those two together like that. However, 
many people who I've spoken to personally who work as some type of administrator with the cloud, they often find themselves, you know, spinning, spinning up different servers on a daily basis, managing those servers. Many times you'll find that, especially larger organizations, as somebody who is a engineer or architect or even an entry level type of associate for the cloud, you're gonna be building a server. Now, you're gonna be handed specifications for said server and you'll start that build. Now, when you get to certain steps within your build, you may find that you have to pass that build, that server, off to somebody else. And that somebody else could be somebody who uh, specifically works with applications. Maybe that somebody else specifically works with security, or that somebody else just does something completely different, right? And, and you're doing this because there's always kind of a process involved, right? So you build your portion of the server. You've spun this up on AWS and you've gotten to a point where other people can log into the server. So you send it off to somebody who works in applications. Well, that person from applications will then start installing the correct software uh, tools that we're going to specifically support, you know, whatever service application program that's going to be on this server. And once that they get done with their part of the build, they might pass it back to you and say, okay, do up, do your finishing steps, uh, securing the server or uh, establishing more policies with it or uh, finishing any type of updates that need to be done. Uh, the, the list really could go on and on, but what you're gonna find is many times you pass things off to one another. So uh, working with the cloud, you end up working with many people because you guys are all kind of collaborating together. Now, of course, every business, does things completely differently, right? You could do everything from start to finish with spinning up servers and servicing them. And that's just kind of one part of it, right? Because there's also understanding how your cloud infrastructure is configured. And as a cloud engineer or architect, that's gonna be one big thing. You know, your managers or your VPs are gonna come to you and say, how can uh, XYZ service or application uh, benefit us by being in the cloud? Or how can we save money in general by utilizing the cloud? Or, you know, what does our infrastructure look like? You're gonna to have to answer these things and you're gonna to have to understand what the impact of the cloud is on that specific organization. So you have to have kind of this global view of what it is you are doing for the organization, how being a cloud engineer architect uh, impacts this organization. How does what you are doing help improve this business. And you know, you'll find yourself where you're, you're often uh, configuring an entire diagram of how a enterprise should work within the cloud, right? Because you're gonna have to look at how you utilize like Azure online or Active Directory, how you segregate uh, different applications and services from you know one uh, cloud instance server to another. And there's a lot involved there. It's not something that you just pick up uh, you know, instantly, or you're going to really understand just by going through different learning platforms. It's something that you kind of have to learn as you go and it takes time. So, you know, you guys see when you're looking at different job postings for engineers and architects or other cloud uh, types of positions that they're looking for people with experience. And that's for a really good reason, because being somebody who is going to administer the cloud you have to have a good understanding of many different technologies. And again, this could be completely different from one to another, but there are there's a lot involved. It's not just this cut and paste, this is what you're gonna be doing all the time. Or this is just because this person does this doesn't mean that you're going to be doing that. And that's okay, right? That's, that's just part of technology. Everybody's jobs are completely different, even though you might have the same job title, which again, job titles, stupid anyway if you're looking at entry level types of positions this might be something where you're just helping spin up these servers uh, do standard configuration builds not much more than that you're not going to be essentially involved too much maybe in the overall design of a cloud infrastructure but you might be a part of it where you're helping build the different servers or in installing different applications and services and things like that. You know, oftentimes I've heard from people who work within these types of positions, you know, they, they work very heavily with different programmers and, and application uh, support specialists, uh, even help desk, right? Because when something goes wrong, you know, it might be up to you to look into uh, how is this issue 
impacting other cloud services. I guess to bring this all back around and try to answer this as uh, appropriately as possible is that there's a big variety in what you need to know, what you should know uh, to be somebody who works in the cloud. Can you go out and take an AWS associate certification and get a cloud job? Anything is possible. Now, it's more than likely going to be entry level, which is a great starting point for you. And if you're looking to be anything above an associate or that entry level, it's probably going to take a couple of years of experience just understanding how the cloud works because it is vast, it is, it is huge. And we keep growing and growing in that area of IT as every day passes. And you might hear of things as, you know, the, the AAS or something where it's uh, as a service. Uh, so there's like software as a service, desktop as a service, uh, network as a service. There's just like everything is as a service nowadays. And typically what you're going to find is those are cloud related uh, services. So whether you're utilizing, you know, uh, Microsoft's Azure, right? That's, you know, you might be using infrastructure as a service where your entire or majority of your infrastructure is hosted out on Azure servers. And it's important to know that, you know, Yes, you are installing or configuring or managing, maintaining, updating servers. So whether that's server 2016, 2019, but it's, it, you're managing that just like you normally would as if that server was sitting right next to you. However, it's it's in the cloud, which is just, it's just a little bit different, right? It's just a little bit different because you have to actually understand the back end of how, say, Microsoft Azure works. And of course, you know, many people who do work within the cloud might want to have a good understanding of different programming languages or scripting languages. So, you know, Java would be a big one, maybe Ruby, uh, Python for scripting. These are different areas that you might have to just be uh, a little bit more versed in. And of course, there's things like APIs. Uh, there's, you know, OpenStack. There's, uh, of course, being familiar with Linux. That's a big one. And of course, we can't forget things like Docker or, you know, other container services. These are things that are definitely going to be under your hood. Now, larger organizations, you might find that you have multiple cloud architects or engineers, and each one of those might be really tied into something specific. So you might have a cloud engineer who is only doing things that are related to programming and development. You might have another uh, cloud engineer who specifically maintains your containers. You know, is it, there's there's a lot of things out there uh, to understand. Of course, smaller organizations, you might have one cloud person and they manage everything that is related to the cloud. So getting asked this question, going back to the very beginning of this video, and I know it's probably been long and whatever, you know, what, what does a cloud engineer do? Well, it's, it's, it varies, you know, how do you become a cloud person? Well, you can go out and take certifications. If you're looking to take certifications, you know, check out Pluralsight. There's a link in the description below for Pluralsight. You can sign up for free, absolutely free. Get a free seven day trial, I think it is. And they have many different videos and courses over there related to cloud services. I highly recommend them. And again, it's free, you can't beat free. Now, can you go out past one of these Microsoft Azure certifications or a uh, GCP certification or a, um, AWS, get a cloud job. Yeah, gonna be entry level, more than likely 99% of the time it will be an entry level job, which is fine or entry level cloud job. And if you're looking to advance, you're looking to get one of these higher level types of positions. It's just, honestly, having the experience, having the couple of years of experience under your belt is only going to benefit you. Don't try to shoot above and beyond. Look at something that's reasonable just getting your foot into the door. And that's my best advice that, that I could really give. Now, I know that I didn't really maybe answer all of these questions entirely in full and you're looking for more information. I did an interview with uh, Sylvester Thompson. I'll put a link to that in the description below. He talks about what he does with his position working in the cloud. I'm also going to be interviewing more cloud professionals and asking them, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? because I think there is a lot of confusion from people who are looking to get into IT or looking to get into the cloud on what these people actually do. Now, I tried to sum it up uh, as quickly and I think uh, simple as I possibly could. And if you guys have more that you'd like to add, throw it in the comments below. I mean, this is a community that helps people. We are here to help people. I'm here to help you. And of course, I try to answer all the questions that I possibly can, but I'm not a know-it-all and nobody who works in IT knows it all. So we rely on other people like you, right there behind the screen, I'm in front of the camera, so behind the screen, who 
maybe are professionals who can leave feedback, who can correct me when I'm wrong. I'm wrong sometimes, and that's okay. But we rely on this community, the IT Career Questions community, to help each other. Because what we're trying to establish here, what we're trying to build and do is bring more people into IT. Because this is the most amazing career field that I think anybody can work in. If you're even remotely interested in any type of technology, try IT, because it's a good career. And you can definitely make a lot of money. And, oh, speaking of, before you leave this video, I know you're going to say, well, how much money can I make working in the cloud? A lot. You can, honestly. Like, people who work within cl cloud technologies, they make a pretty good amount of money. And you can just go on Indeed and search for cloud jobs, and you'll see that <laughs> they make a lot of money. Are you going to make a lot of money starting out? Maybe. Anything is possible. I like to say that one a lot. So, anyway, that's all I got for this video. I'm sick of rambling and going on and on. Stay tuned for more videos where we talk about what people actually do working in the cloud that maybe can help answer more of your questions. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can. Thank you guys for watching. As always, take it easy.